Coach Dave, yes, yes. And uh, for the, those of you who are frequent watchers, got a little more of a handle today on, on the MIDI and this instrument. We're getting close, still not exactly the way I want it, but uh, I didn't drive Austin crazy the, when we were warming up, so that's, that's a step in the right direction. So enough about that. All right, we're doing one of our letter letter shows today I'm going to the letter F now that first song I kind of took a little shall we say poetic license it, the name of the song is A Foggy Day but who needs the A F fits foggy very nicely and F fits fits our theme so Foggy Day 1937 written by George Gersh and I believe it came from a movie again one of those songs Never heard of the movie, which means it probably didn't do much, but fortunately for us and the world, as they say, the song did persevere. It's become a jazz standard. It's a fun song to play. A little, little hairy in spots with the chord changes, but uh, I think we got through it okay. So we're going to move on to 1934 for this next song. Now, there's not a lot really known about this song as to who and when and why it was written. Don't think it came uh, from a movie or a show. Not sure, not sure. Uh, <clears throat> but I think, I believe, if I am correct, 
It was also very popular during World War II because the song is called For All We Know, or to expand on that, For All We Know We May Never Meet Again. So uh, many people said that as the boys were leaving to go fight the war and a lot of them never came back. So For All We Know, 1934. <laughs> Nice tune, but kind of a sad tune. You, you, hopefully you didn't notice, but that happens to be in the same key as Foggy Day. And a couple of the phrases are very similar, so a couple of spots there, I almost got back into Foggy Day. But we got it done, we got it done. Now this next tune, written in 1956, wow, it's pretty recent for us. Young lady named Peggy Lee had a huge, enormous, big hit on this tune in 1958. Uh, she was a very pretty blonde young lady, great singer, and this this song really made her made her career. So, a uh, little tune called Fever. <laughs> Thank you. 
fever, fever. Everybody's got the fever. Oh, gee, I just thought that wasn't really a great song to play after what we've done the past couple of years. Now, oh, well, never mind that. It has One has nothing to do with the other. All right, 1940. The song was written, the lyrics and the words are written by Johnny Mercer, who was a great, great lyricist and wordicist way back then. He wrote the words to, and lyrics to a lot of tunes. A lot of people, a lot of people have recorded this tune. In fact, 1963, a fellow named Ricky Nelson. Remember Ricky Nelson, the Nelson family? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dave. Hi, Rick. Hi, Mom. You know, hi. It took him 10 minutes to go through the highs at the beginning of the show. But anyway, and of course, as you probably know, Ricky Nelson did die in a plane crash, as, as so many of those great, great uh, entertainers from that time, the Big Bopper and Patsy Cline, to name, to name a couple of others. But he did have a big hit on this, and at that time, the, a few of the groups <clears throat> did, where did some of the old songs. I think it was Brenda Lee that did Who's Sorry Now, uh, way back in the, you know, the late 50s, early 60s. So it was kind of a trend. So uh, this song, actually, when I walk in, well, it's, it's called Fool, Fool's Walk In, so. But anyway, we won't get into that. Fool's Walk In, where angels fear to tread. So here we go. Fool. 
rush in, fools rush in where angels fear to tread. All right, well, our next tune, let's go way back for this one, the Roaring Twenties, the 1920s. Now, <clears throat> there are many songs, very similar songs written during that time. A lot of, you know, up-tempo and, you know, jazz, jazzy things uh, like the Charleston. And, and this particular tune, uh, this song has persevered, well, 100 years. In fact, I think I noticed, saw the other day somewhere, that is now in what they call public domain. What does that mean, Coach Dave? Well, what that means is if you want to do an album and put this song on it, you don't have to pay any copyright fees. Uh, you can play this song anywhere, anytime, anyhow, any way that you like to do it. It is now in public domain. Now, <clears throat> I've done a few albums, and I've always, you know, made sure that I did, you know, pay, you know, the copyright fees aren't that much. It might cost you two, three hundred dollars for one album. And you know the folks that wrote these tunes, or or their their uh, their relatives, or whoever's in charge, of, you know, I mean, they need some recognition. You know, they make a few bucks um, between the copyright fee and and the fee for the company that does that. I don't think they end up with a lot. But you know, if hundred people record their tune, get two or three two or three bucks a piece. You know, that's that's. So walking around pocket change type money. So anyway, enough of that. Song is called Five Foot Two Eyes of Blue. Has anybody seen my gal? It's, it was, it was uh, both those titles were used during that time, Five Foot Two or Has Anybody Seen My Gal? So because we need an F song, it's today for our intents and purposes, it's Five for two. Here we go. Thank you. 
for two eyes of blue as anybody. Anybody? Anybody seem like gal? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're getting down towards the end of our time today. And this last tune, one of my favorite tunes, and just about every one of my live shows, I, I do play this song. <clears throat> it was written in 1954. And it was called In Other Words, In Other Words, and it was a waltz. And it, you know, it was, it was fairly popular, got a lot of airplay, blah, blah, blah. 1964, some guy named, ah, uh, what does this guy, the Frank, uh, Sinatra, that's it. Sinatra got a hold of the song. Well, you know, Frankie's not gonna do any of those silly waltzes. So he did it in 4-4 four, four time, and since then, of course, 4-4 four, four time has sort of become the standard for playing the song. And, and I remember one time the great Corey Pesaturo was, was, was on, this, on this very stage, the world's greatest accordion player, and we got to play that tune, and I gave that same introduction about it being a waltz, and he's sitting there, and, and he's you know kind of fiddling a little bit, trying to play his own. I said, wow, he says, that sounds crazy. Well, of course, you know, Corey, being the young whippersnapper he is, he wasn't even thought of when Frankie took this tune and made it a four four. So here we go, little fly us all to the moon. Let's go. <laughs> In fact, we got to kind of fly out of here right about now. I want to thank you all for watching and listening, tuning in, however it is you get to hear our show. Uh, we really appreciate it. Of course, naturally, 
A big thank you to Austin behind the glass, and I didn't frustrate him too much today, I don't think. So I'll have to figure some, something to do next week to get him frustrated. And uh, of course, you know what I'm gonna say, bring those youngins in to hear all this great music. So let's take it home with, oh, I guess, uh, ah, fly me the more, why not? <laughs> Thank you. 